here and if you remember the first Nexus 7 that was one of the most popular Android tablets of all time mostly thanks to that bang for the buck ratio it was a lot of tablet for a very low price so here comes the second generation the 2013 Nexus 7 it's brand new and while there are a lot of minor improvements and a lot to the spec upgrades that you get with a new version of any device there are three main reasons why this tablet can actually be considered the best Android tablet that you can buy right now for any price. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and take a closer look. This is a full review of the 2013 Nexus 7. So the first of the three things that make this tablet so great is the form factor. This is of course a tablet with a seven inch display and it's sort of a mid-sized device that puts it right between one-handed and two-handed use. If you wanna type out a long email or something, you can use two hands on that keyboard or if you just wanna scroll on a magazine or use it casually, it's easily a one-handed device as well. A lot of this is because the Nexus 7 is so light, coming down to just 290 grams, which is now slightly lighter than the iPad mini and about the same thinness as the iPad mini as well, which is impressive. And overall, it's very comfortable to hold. It has that soft touch back with gentle curves in your hand. And this also happens to be a very well-balanced tablet, which is harder to do than you might think. It's not top heavy or bottom heavy, uh, the battery is just about where you'd want it to be, and we'll talk about that a little later, but it's in just the right spot where no matter how I'm holding it, it's a pleasure to use. Now, there are some notable changes to the outside when compared to the old Nexus 7. Those are the bezels, the speaker, and the camera on the back. The bezels are indeed thinner on the sides, but bigger on the top and the bottom, which actually makes it a bit narrower and taller. And at first glance, you might think, oh, those unsightly bezels, why did they do that? It looks so ugly. But when you start using the tablet, you soon realize that these bezels are really the only place to put your fingers when holding it in landscape mode, watching videos, gaming, etc. So it's actually a good thing that they put these there for easier use. The speakers are new and they're pretty good. They're stereo speakers and they're located on the opposite sides of the back of the device. Now, yes, they're still back facing speakers and as someone spoiled by the Nexus 10's front facing speakers it's kind of hard to go back to these rear facing tablet speakers but on the whole these are quite nice at normal volumes and they distort a little bit at high volumes but I think this is one of the parts of the tablet where they skimped a little bit to save money and tried to enhance it after the fact using some virtual surround sound software it didn't really work these are just you know normal sounding stereo speakers and then we're at that five megapixel rear facing camera I just wanna say it's a camera on a tablet. I wouldn't expect it to be good in any way. And at this point, it kind of confuses me why they chose to include it anyway. The images and video it takes are pretty muted in color, not very sharp. And this Nexus 7 is 30 bucks more expensive than the first generation. Couldn't they have hit that magical 199 price point again if they didn't include this cheap crappy camera sensor and glass on the back? I don't know, who knows? But you know, you still look at it and feel a little bit awkward taking pictures on your tablet anyway, so I would just ignore the fact that there's a camera on this one. Now the second thing, the second thing that makes this tablet so magnificent, and it's easily my favorite feature, is the new display. It's not just a great display for a tablet that's only 230 bucks, it's a great display for a tablet period. I love the Nexus 7's new display and anyone who loves pixels with me will love it too. It's a 1920 by 1200 panel, which gives it a pixel density of 323 pixels per inch. That's the sharpest of any tablet on the market right now. It's also the best viewing angles and colors of any tablet on the market right now. It's also an IPS display that gets brighter than any other tablet on the market right now. It's just phenomenal. It's incredibly responsive. Every time I turn it on, I smile a little bit because Using a tablet with a display like this is such a pleasure, it makes you never want to put it down. So that leaves the third and final reason that this tablet has stolen my heart, and that is the operating system. It's a Nexus. Now, listen, I've used a lot of Android tablets and phones out there, and there are a lot of great Android skins on phones that are actually catching up to the fluidity and experience from stock Android. Sense 5 on HTC One is a good example. That's becoming a more even playing field. But there is nothing, just nothing else that comes close to a Nexus experience on tablets right now. I have serious trouble recommending an Android tablet that isn't running stock Android or something close to it. The Nexus 7 is no exception. It performs beautifully well. Inside of it is a 1.5 gigahertz sort of beefed up Snapdragon S4 Pro, which is a great chip and two gigabytes of RAM. But by the way, it performs and handles all of the simultaneous apps and multitasking, general everyday use and responsiveness. 
I really don't care what's inside because this thing kicks ass. Now, I did a separate video all about the newest features of Android 4.3, so if you wanna check that out, it'll be in the description right below that like button. But overall, new customizations and trim support especially are just a home run on this tablet. So much fun to use. In fact, I would think, I think fun is a great word to describe this tablet. I found that if someone recommended an app or something for me to check out, I could just download it, install it, and start playing it in a matter of seconds without a hint of any sort of delay, which is great. I've had a lot of fun using this tablet. It really nails the experience. And the performance in the graphics, as you can see here with all the reflections and live rendering and physics that's going on, it's as high end as it gets right now. I mean, if you wanna play games, this tablet is so lightweight, it's almost a no brainer thanks to the form factor. Now, all of this awesome stuff comes with one major downside. Remember how I told you the Nexus 7 is the same thinness as the first gen iPad mini? Yeah, it's thinner than last year's Nexus 7, which means it also has a smaller battery in physical size. We're looking at a 3,950 milliamp hour battery here. This all means it won't last quite as long during regular constant use. You'll probably get about eight or nine hours out of it. But what's nice is it burns almost no battery in standby mode. I had one night where I forgot to plug it in at 27% and I woke up the next morning and I was at 26. So it's also a really, really power sipper when it's in standby. And it's also compatible with the Qi standard for wireless charging. So if you pick up a couple wireless chargers, you can have them in convenient locations, maybe an office or your home. So you never really have to worry about battery life. But you should know that this is indeed a smaller physical battery than the last Nexus 7. But dude, this tablet is so much fun. You'd be hard pressed to find something that's genuinely bad to say about it. I've enjoyed using this tablet so much during the time that I've had it. I honestly think you will too. So at the end of the day, the Nexus 7 is another great tablet and it's got a lot of reasons to upgrade to it over the old Nexus 7 or any other Android tablet out there just because the price is so good, the performance is so good and the display especially is so good. I, I could recommend this tablet for just about anyone. I'm likely gonna be switching to this as my main tablet from the Nexus 10 that I was using earlier, just because it's a lot smaller and more portable, but it keeps that awesome display. I love the Nexus 10 display, but now I also love the Nexus 7 display, and this is more portable. So I'll be able to put all my textbooks on here and not carry a ton of heavy things in my backpack all the time. Either way, that's been it. Thank you for watching this brand new review of this brand new tablet. If you enjoyed it, definitely feel free to give a thumbs up below. But more importantly, if you want to see more videos like this in the future, there's a subscribe button below for you guys to pay. So the best-selling tablet uh, right now uh, by a large margin is this. It, even better than the 10-inch, this is the iPad mini, the 7.9-inch tablet from Apple. Selling like hotcakes. Selling like hotcakes. But there is a new tablet in town that I think is going to start taking... Uh, some of those sales away, and this is it. Uh, Google announced it last week. This is the Nexus 7 tablet uh, from uh, Google. This is the successor, the 2013 version, the successor to the first Nexus 7. Google uh, has, uh, has it made by Asus. You know, the first one was designed and built in about five months, or five weeks, I think it was, <laughs> very quickly. And Asus has had now a year, and Google's had a year to kind of improve uh, the design of this. And they have done everything right. The first thing that's going to jump out at you on this is this is a 1080p IPS display, 1920 by 1200. That's 323 dots per inch. It's the highest resolution uh, small tablet on the market today. It is just spectacular. And it, uh, you got to see it probably in person because it, it really looks good um, when you, when you, when you get, uh, get images on it, when you get text on it. Uh, if I launch the Kindle application, uh, you can see how uh, books look on it it's just very crisp no dots visible at all 323 dots per inch apple would call it a, a retina display now uh I, you're seeing on the video a little strobing that is not uh, visible on the screen that is no. just an artifact of the uh, frame rate of the camera versus the frame rate of the nexus 7 it is rock solid crystal clear uh it, they've added uh some cameras so the original nexus 7 had this front-facing camera they've moved it a little over to the right is 1.2 megapixels nice high def front-facing camera, and they have added a 5-megapixel back camera. Very good quality camera. This looks great. Uh, I don't know how many times people use tablets to take pictures, but given the size of this tablet, the ease with which you can put it even into a pocket, um, this might be something you'd end up taking a lot of pictures with. And it comes with the traditional uh, uh, jelly bean camera application. Quite good, quite easy to use, quite fast. Um, I, I have to say, uh, you know, you might end up taking more pictures with this because it has a camera. Great battery life on this, too. They put a 3,950 milliamp hour battery in it. That's a big battery. Nine hours of active use. Basically, 
I've had this now for four days. Charge it up at the beginning of the day overnight, and I don't I don't plug it in again until I go to bed. It's got great battery life. And I've already ordered a Qi charger because it says wireless charging built in. So you can put it on a, any compatible Qi charger, and it'll just charge up, pick it up, put it down. They've also added stereo speakers, so left and right speakers with Fraunhofer uh, surround sound. That's something new. Inside, uh, a very fast Snapdragon S4 Pro running at 1.5 gigahertz. That's a quad-core processor. Excellent GPU in here as well. And I'll show you, I'll give you a little uh, taste of uh, the, the GPU by uh, playing a video game. This was one of the games that Google demonstrated uh, when they uh, showed off this tablet uh, last week. This is from Ubisoft. Prince of Persia takes advantage of OpenGL support on here. I think already you can see how great the screen is. Those of you in studio with me can hear how good yeah, this the thing music is sounds. It's loud. Uh, of course, you'll plug in headphones. No, no, no small tablet's going to give you great sound. Uh, but it is, you know, it's stereo sound and so forth. Let's but this is something where you could you could play a song on it and leave it on the on the could. counter. And, you know what and, I do is audiobooks is fine. Yeah. I wish it had front firing uh, speakers. It's too bad it's so dark because you can hardly see how good this is. But uh, we'll we'll get into the light. Oh, I'm gonna have to fight a battle. I hope you don't mind. I'm gonna a little busy right now. Uh, You're taking down you know, this, the, the this reason, hairy house and yeah. The reason I'm showing this. Oh, you, you, <laughs> I, 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 the reason I'm showing this, we're turning up the brightness a little bit so you can see some of the detail, is uh, that this is a very competent gaming device. And I think one of the things uh, the iPad does so well is it's a brilliant gaming device. Now, admittedly, Android doesn't have the variety of games yet, but I think given the quality of this display, the speed of the processor, you're going to start seeing more games on this thing. And it certainly does everything Android does uh, so well. Google Now, of course, is built in Google Speech. Uh, and so forth. This is the 4.3 version of uh, Jelly Bean, uh, the a Android operating system, which means it has built in the multi-user capability. Uh, and of course, Chromecast is supported by it. So if you run Netflix and you have a Chromecast, you can play stuff from it. I've been playing Google Music like crazy from it. Very snappy. I think you can feel how quickly it loads, how quickly uh, pages go. Let me, let me go to uh, Flipboard, which is a kind of a challenging app uh, because, of course, it's very graphical. And you'll see how quickly I'm able to scroll through images. Wow. And it, it feels really good. This is a fast, effective, uh, 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 small tablet. One of the, I, I think, the best I've ever used. Certainly the best 7-inch I've ever used. Now, uh, one of the things they're doing, this is a 16-gig version. When it comes into your hands, about 12 gigs free. That's one of the nice things about pure vanilla uh, Google Android is it's not very big. It doesn't have a lot of yeah. crap on it. So you've got plenty of space. I think 16 gigs may even be enough for most people unless you're going to put very large files on it. I have my audio, audible books on it. That's the probably the biggest thing I have on here. And, you know, it's fine. I don't, I don't, I haven't run out of room. I can get two or three, uh, easily two or three books on here. Um, it, it will have 32 gigabyte version soon. And they are going to make, by the way, 16 gigs is 229 bucks. And that's important. 30 bucks more than the original Nexus 7, but you get a whole lot more than 30 bucks more worth of value. Uh, for another 40 bucks, unlike Apple, they don't charge a whole lot more for more storage. You can get the 32 gig for uh, 269. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think that's a great price. That's like that's like movie theater price. I know forty like, bucks for only forty bucks wow. more. Yeah, you can have the large. You can have the large, and they are making an LTE version that'll be one hundred twenty bucks more. And the nice thing about the LTE thirty two gig version is it works everywhere. This is the first we've seen with LTE radios for North America and Europe for Verizon and AT and T all oh. in one device. There'll be a SIM card slot right here. Um, and so that makes it very desirable. Both 32 gig and LTE versions are coming down the road later. I tell you what, I'm pretty happy at 229 with this 16 gig tablet. Uh, you, you know, I got to give you pros and cons. The pros, the best screen ever, 323 dots per inch. It's super fast. Video games are great on it. I kind of bought it, to be honest, to, uh, as a, a dedicated Simpsons tapped out uh, playing uh, machine. And at that price, you could almost do it for that. And it is great. I mean, Simpsons tapped out runs so beautifully, so smoothly on here. The detail is fabulous. You almost feel like you live in Springfield. Built-in GPS, which is also nice. Apple does not put a GPS in its Wi-Fi only models. So you can use the Google Maps, uh, a gyroscope, an accelerometer, compass, ambient light sensor. Uh, it this this is a loaded device. So uh, the pros, you get a huge amount for an amazingly low price. A great, very high, highest resolution screen we've seen on this side. All right, I got to find a con. One con. Yeah. One con. They could have made a little bit smaller. See how big. 
the bezel is on the left and right hand side. Google says they did that so you can hold it and play games like this. <laughs> I, I it, well, it just gives it a funny aspect ratio. It feels a little tall and stretched because it is 16 by nine. And so as a result, I, you know, I maybe I wouldn't have liked, I would have liked these to be a little bit smaller. Imagine if you get the bezel down to just about the size of the screen, this thing would feel like an amazingly tiny thing. It still is pretty tiny. Yeah, uh, I mean, smaller it, than the mini. Yeah, it's small. Okay, now this is something to point out. The uh, Apple stuff is four by three aspect ratio. So you do have more dots on the screen. You don't have, uh, uh, I mean, more, uh, you know, the resolution is, is higher, but it, it's still only 1024 by 768. So uh, we're talking something like 200 dots per inch compared to 320 dots per inch. There's a big difference here. Yeah. So, yeah, you get a little bit more screen size, but you don't get more screen uh, real estate. If you prefer 4.3, of course, you're going to want to stick with Apple. Um, another thing people sometimes mention when they talk about tablets and Android, it used to be that, there, that the lack of tablet apps really hurt. This is back in the days of Honeycomb. Yeah. Uh, nowadays, almost all apps scale perfectly well, even if they're not tablet-oriented. Uh, For instance, I'll show you. Carbon. This is my uh, favorite Twitter app on Android. And when you launch it the first time, they say, "Oh, we're so sorry. This is not an Android app. We're apo we apologize that it, it, it is not. I mean, it is an Android. It's not a tablet app. We apologize. It's. It, but we're going to get a. Ta what do you need? This looks great to me. I don't think this is. Then that's the beauty of it. Android apps scale to fit a variety of arbitrary size screens. I don't think it's really an issue. Maybe it doesn't rotate. Maybe that's the one thing that you'd want in yeah. a tablet app. Most other apps do, including, of course, uh, Jelly Bean rotates just fine. This is fast. It's easy to use. The only negative, big ears. Hey, I, I like a lot of people with big ears. It's not going to stop <laughs> me. I want to say it's a buy at $229. This is a remarkable tablet. What, what, is, what is the biggest uh, upgrade from the last Nexus 7 for you? This from last year's, like, 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 how is this screen. better? Just screen, 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 screen. By the way, a point uh, we should make: the Nexus Seven from last year uh, was starting to get sluggish for a lot of people. Me too. It really felt slower and slower, and we couldn't figure out what was going on. Google finally explained it when they released the upgrade to four point three. They built in something called Trim into the operating system, which does garbage collection on the uh. Uh, on the SSD. Without it, SSDs do get slower and slower. But you know what? I put uh, the latest Jelly Bean upgrade on my on my old Nexus Seven, and it's just as fast as ever now really fixed it and of course you won't have that same kind of so, lag. So you think between that and the Snapdragon this will age better than the last Oh uh, absolutely this is a super fast tablet with a gorgeous screen and even if you've never used Android I think you'll find that the difference between iOS and Android has shrunk to such a small size almost all the apps you'd ever want to use are available on Android now including some apps that are not yet available on iOS like well, Google Now is available on iOS, but it doesn't work nearly as no, well as it does no. on Android. So this is a definite buy. An amazing tablet. It just blows me away what they've able to do for $229. In fact, at this point, I'm going to not only say that people should get this instead of the iPad Mini, but there's a lot of people who are looking at inexpensive Windows computers or, or Windows RT computers for three or $400 and say, I can't spend more for a computer. This is what you Think should about consider. It. Think about a tablet. You could get a keyboard for another 100 bucks, and you've got probably a better system than that you cheap. You can find PC. out more.